So plan well in advance. And finally, number four, the fourth way I think you can bring delight back into your service, push for honest and specific feedback every time. Not just once a quarter or once a year, honest, specific feedback every time. It needs to be honest. It's not just going up to someone and saying, what do you think of the service on Sunday? And for them to go, oh yeah, it was lovely. It was great, really enjoyed it. Nice talk, pastor. It's not gonna work. It needs to be honest. And so the way the way you can press for honesty is to be specific. You need to be specific about your win for a Sunday so that people can judge you according to that win. You know, I can remember talking to one of these new churches that had just joined our network here in the UK. And they said, you know, this is a this is new thing from thinking for us about creating church that unchurched people like. Are you saying that we can't have words of knowledge and tongues and things on a Sunday morning? And I said, well, I wouldn't tell you what you should and shouldn't put into your service on Sunday morning. All I'm asking you to do is just decide what the win is. If the win is that unchurched people would come and would love it so much they want to come back, then if that's your win, then you have to look at the elements that you put in and say, is this going to help us get to that win? And if it does, and if people do invite their friends and if people do keep coming back, then keep doing it. If it doesn't, why is it in there? So here are six things that I think will help you with some honest and specific feedback every time you put a service together. First off, write down, make it clear. What was the win for this Sunday? There's an overall win. The unchurched people would come. I want to keep coming back. But what was the win for this particular Sunday? Did we hit it? Secondly, who was our target audience? Who were we aiming at? Thirdly, where was the tension? Where was that question that everybody wanted an answer to? Where was, because if there's no tension in any story or any journey, it's kind of boring. Fourthly, why did it matter? You know, why did it matter? Because if you know why it matters, it creates that sense of passion in you. You know, if we if we don't teach on family life, who knows? Maybe people will get divorced. Maybe kids will go off the rails. Fifthly, what did we do or what did we not do to engage a first timer? Where were we good and where were we not so good at engaging first timers? And finally, in a perfect world, what would we have changed? If we had budget, if we had enough time and enough people, enough volunteers, what would we have changed? There's six great questions that we used regularly to help assess our services. And and just a, a final thought on that. It's so important. Sunday morning is your shop window to the world. If I came to your church, I wouldn't go and check out the small group policy. I wouldn't go and check out your missions policy. I would just come on a Sunday. Sunday's the shop window to your church. And so I would say you need to have the best people driving this. And that doesn't necessarily need to be the lead pastor. So often in church, it is just the lead pastor. Maybe he or she are not the best people to run this. Someone needs to own it. You know, if three people three people are responsible for feeding the cat, the cat's going to starve because everybody will leave it to somebody else. Someone needs to take responsibility, but it doesn't need to be the lead pastor. So let me land this plane. I've waffled on for too long. The author Max Dupree said this, he said, in the end, it's important to remember that we cannot become what we need to be by remaining who we are. We cannot become purple cow churches with star moments that are full of passion. We can't become what we need to be if we just stick with who we are. And my three boys are grown up and they've left home now. But when they were younger, like a lot of kids, I guess, they they used to play church. I'd get a call from downstairs and I'd go upstairs and and I'd open their bedroom door and Nathan would be the greeter and Nathan would sit me down next to Big Ted and Little Ted and some other stuffed toys. That was my seat. And then Matt would have a little blue, I think it was a Mickey Mouse keyboard and he would play the worship. And then Joe, who's my youngest and still my most entrepreneurial son, he would hit me up with a collection plate halfway through. <laughs> uh But it was all so cute and it was all so safe and it was all too comfortable. Listen to me. If we're going to delight our guests again, it's time to stop playing at church and stop just letting it happen week in and week out and start taking a few more risks. It's time to get a little uncomfortable, a little unconventional, because a comfortable church, a conventional church will always be in decline. It's time for you to become the kind of visionary leader who will take your church beyond and your church services beyond business as usual. You need to become a risk taker who won't give people what they want, but show them something they didn't even know they needed. More than ever in our nation, 
We need a church who have leaders who who refuse to simply appease their flocks and dare to take a risk.